Thanks guys and welcome into the doghouse where yes, we are here to debate UMass versus UConn. ESPN has dubbed it the pillow fight of the year. <laughs> two one and six teams, two teams really struggling, two teams that will be independent next year. Obviously UMass already is and UConn will be next year. Now the Huskies opened the week as nine and a half point favorites, but as of right now, they are 10 and a half point favorites on the road at UMass. So my question for you guys is, will the Huskies cover the spread? Eric, we'll go to you first. UConn is not covering the point spread this week. Let me repeat that. They are not covering the point spread. Um, UConn beat Wagner by three points. I'm going to repeat that too. UConn beat Wagner by three points, guys. Um, I'd see them winning this game for sure, but I just don't see the 10 and a half points being feasible. Uh, UMass recently beat Akron 37 to 29, and I personally believe that Akron is a better team than Wagner. Um, yeah, UConn has made strides. They played a good game against Houston. I see them winning this game, but I just don't see the 10 and a half. Excuse me, ten and a half being possible. Richard, um, being at the game at Houston, I think that UConn defense was electric. That run defense, they, Houston could not run the ball on us at all. We missed a couple big plays, but I think that if we connect on one or two of those, it's going to be a whole different game. And against a team like UMass, we could definitely hit on one or two, and it's going to be the game. And that's going to be why we win by so much because we're going to win. It just depends on how much we're going to win by. That's why I do believe we're going to cover. I'm going to agree with you on this one, Richard. I think that the Huskies have a lot to play for this week. Their pride has been damaged after winning their game, first game of the year. They've lost six straight. They want to come out. They want to show that they're better than UMass. And better by a substantial amount. And like you said, Zergio just missed a couple of long balls last week that could have potentially swung the game in favor of the Huskies. The defense was flying around. They're easily their best game of the season. I think they're going to come out. I think they're going to play their best performance, complete performance of the season. I think they're going to beat UMass. I disagree, but I guess that we'll find out. Well, huh? we all agree at least that they're going to win. Yeah, I can go with Two that. of us agree they're going to cover the 10.5 point spread. Eric does not. Yeah, now, switching topics to mm. first night this past Friday, the official kickoff of the 2019-2020 season for basketball here in stores. We saw a dunk contest that was filled with highlights and some lowlights, but we'll talk about the highlights. Which dunk do you think was better? Was it James Booknight's reverse, or was it Olivia Nelson Odota throwing one down? Richard, we'll go to you first this time. I think that the reverse definitely gets it. Um, the dunk contest is really about difficulty, um, and I don't know a lot of people or anyone else on this campus that could have made the Booknight dunk. That's why I think it's hands down better than the other one. Uh, so let me put it this way. There have been three women in the past 10 years that have been able to dunk a basketball. Let me, uh, Lisa Wesley, Candace Parker, and Britt Griner. You can add Olivia Nelson Adota to that list. Easily, in my opinion, it's more impressive that Olivia Nelson Adota was able to throw down a basketball than it was Book Knight taking 30 minutes to legitimately score that or hit that dunk. That's a good call. Book Knight, that was what, try <laughs> seven or eight? So, I don't know. Do you think Liv is going to throw it down during the season? You know what? I've actually personally talked about Liv, and she said, I'm going to try. So, I'll go with her word on it. I'll say, we'll yeah. do it. Last year, she tried. <laughs> she couldn't throw one down first night. She didn't try during the year. This season, she threw one down. So, we'll have to see. Now, James Book Knight, rough week for him. He was flying high on first night, throwing down that impressive reverse dunk, also throwing one down over his teammate, Richie Springs. But then news came out on Tuesday that he was charged with pretty lot, serious crime. A couple of different things. Yeah, a couple different things. <clears throat> Fleeing from the police. He may have been driving under the influence. There was alcohol in his breath. This incident stemming from September 27th when he, when he crashed a car down in store center. He fled from the police. He was clearly not, misbeha not behaving as he should have been in that situation. It's going to be a fallout from this, certainly. We don't know what yet. There's still more reports coming out as the days go on about this incident. But what do you guys think will be his consequences? Um, I think this is a very serious situation. I don't want to um, de-escalate de, uh, de this any more than it should be. Um, Book Knight made some really wrong choices. I think Coach Hurley will put some emphasis in the fact that he's a freshman. I think that um, he'll take it a little easier on him. I think he mentioned earlier in the week that he wants to see how he reacts to the reaction, not just from the press, but also just being on campus, the type of lifestyle that comes with being a freshman and the different things you have to adapt to. Um, I want to say personally, you know, he's only suspended two games. I could see this being just because I'm selfish and I want to see him play against Florida, but uh, I could see this stemming into something maybe from four to six. Um, Sorry to interrupt, but I, I think in the past we've seen Hurley last year with Jalen. I think he suspended him. Um, Jalen Adams two games, and I think Sid Wilson six. So I, I'm going to go between um, four and six games. Richard? Uh, as you said, it's a serious allegation. Everything that he went down that night, um, it's definitely regrettable for Book Knight. 
And I think it's going to be somewhere around five games because you just got to, especially since he's a freshman, I think that you have to be harder on him. Um, it, it's, it's definitely a different, it's definitely a learning curve coming to a, a big university like this, being a stud basketball player. But you have to, you have, you understand that that's unacceptable. You can't have that in your program at all. Being a newer coach too for Hurley, um, you got to just lay down the law. You can't, you can't allow any of that, especially for a freshman. You, you, that's just not acceptable at all in your program. I think both of you made great points. I think that if this was year five or six for Hurley, it'd be a little different. I think he might be a little more relaxed, but. I mean, Hurley's reputation is still on the line. It's yeah. year two at UConn. He's, he has everything to prove, and so does Book Knight. And Book Knight made a mistake, and he's going to have to pay the consequences. And in my personal opinion, I definitely don't think he'll be back for that November 17th game against Florida here on campus. But as for after that, I think that only time's going to tell. I think the more information that comes out, and then his court hearing is in a couple days. So after that, we'll I guess we'll see how the legal process plays out. But I don't see this being settled anytime soon. No, I don't think so either. But for Book Knight's sake, I hope he can learn from this experience. I hope that... It can only make him a better person, and it can only make the team better people and better team collectively. So that's all we have from the doghouse today. We're going to send it back to Jalen and Julia in UC Sports. Thanks for tuning in.